purse. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest rain, but holyly on Jesus' name. On grass and solid rock I sit, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. When darkness fails his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On grass and solid rock I sit, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. His hope is covered, not just blood, so for me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gets weak, he did his all my hope and stay. On cross the solid rock I sit, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Sing the last. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I hit in him be found. Dress in his righteousness alone, faultless and stand before the throne. Oh, Christ the solid rock I stand, oh, Flip over to page number 368, and let's sing that little old hymn, He Leadeth Me. Page number 368 there in your red book. Around the first. He leadeth me, oh blessed thought, oh words with heavenly comfort brought. Whate'er I do, where'er I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He Sometimes it seems a deepest glimpse, sometimes where Eden's flowers bloom. My water still hold troubled sea, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me by his own hand. Big 
victory's won. In death's cold wave, I will not flee, since God through Jordan pleadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful power I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. All right, you can be seated. Hey, Amen. Good morning, church. Good to be back in the Lord's house. Amen. I'm thankful for your faithfulness and thankful for being here today and appreciate the goodness of God. Amen. Um, hallelujah. Okay, looks like we got just a couple of announcements I'd like to make. Um, for those of you that don't know, of course, Miss Tony or Miss Tony. <laughs> Couldn't have happened to a better person. Amen. Uh, brother Tony, Miss Allie, uh, was able to have a baby, and uh, her name is Amelia Grace Santabanez. And let's see, she was 19 inches long, 7 pounds, and 1 ounce. And um, I'm sure most of you know they are at UK Hospital. Um, they posted an uh, update this morning on the uh, Grace group, the Unity group, and essentially uh, doctors have let them know that it's, it's going to be a little while before they get to come home yet. They're just, and, and from what I understand, that's just how it is. It's, it's day to day. It's day to day. They don't really put them on a timeline because uh, they just don't know. But uh, we want to praise the Lord. There was an opening at the Ronald McDonald House which I'm assuming is like a place they get to stay for free. That's a blessing. Amen, church. And um, so we thank the Lord for that. Um, the breathing tube came out yesterday. They, they put her on a, a breathing tube. They intubated her, essentially. And she's able to just uh, have the nasal cannula, from what I understand. The nose, perfect, and um, started on some milk, and they said they were able to hold her for the first time yesterday, and we give God praise for that. Amen, church. Um, just continue to pray that uh, Emilia will get better sooner rather than later, that she'll be able to breathe without as much assistance on the CPAP, and that uh, they'll get to bring the, bring the baby home and and uh, show her off to us. Amen, church. Um, good. good. Praise the Lord. A lot of things to praise him about, but let's continue to pray for her too today when we pray. Um, how, so is, is Allie the one dealing with some symptoms, like cold-type symptoms? Let's pray for Allie too. She's nervous about that. Let's pray that those uh, subside and she gets well soon as well. Okay, church? But uh, ain't God good? Amen, and we thank him. We thank him for his goodness. Um, all right, business meeting will be today at uh, 4 o'clock, so everybody that's uh, willing and able to come out and be a part of that, come out and be a part of it today. Uh, ladies' Bible study will be Tuesday at 9.30, and uh, the nursery and cleaning and junior church cooking sign-ups are in the landing area of the foyer. If uh, you can assist in any of those areas Please do and help us out in that. Amen? All right. I'm pretty sure that's all the announcements that I have. Uh, Lord sure has been good to us. I want to thank him for the, the uh, Valentine's banquet. We had us a good time, good turnout, and I want to appreciate the Lord and everybody that worked in that. And just glad to be around God's people today. Amen? Um, want to go, Lord, in prayer together. Uh, again, want to remember the Santa Benezes and pray for baby Amelia. Want to remember those that are out sick today. Sickness is rampant. Amen. It's just that time of year. And so let's be prayerful about those that can't be here today due to sickness. Um, another thing is the nursing home. Uh, nursing homes dealing with sickness. So we're, 
uh, holding off from going back to that right now, having church over there. So be praying about that if you could, uh, that we can get back in there sooner rather than later because they miss it when we ain't there. Amen? Amen. Anybody with some unspoken, I don't typically do that, but things going on, you know the Lord knows and needs prayer over. Okay. Miss Marlene. Oh, Kyle's wife, Brother Kyle's wife. She's lost. Okay, very serious. Thank you, Brother Beckham, for that. Uh, we want to lift that up in prayer today, amen? And uh, specifically pray that God will do a miracle, that they could give this lady the gospel and her receive it before she passes. Hallelujah. Let's pray about that. Amen. Everybody that's able, let's do that. Let's pray together. Let's gather in around the altar. If you're able, that's, that'd be a, a blessing. If not, you can pray where you're at. And then... Um, we will take our time, spend some time together today talking to God, asking the Lord to do what only He can do. So here at this time, let's just, in one mind, in one accord, corporally with our church family, let's pray, talk to God. Father, I thank You for this day. Lord, I thank you for your many blessings. Lord, I thank you for this church. Lord, thank you for loving us in spite of us, God. Thank you, Lord, for each and every person that's come here today, Lord, and decided to be present here at our church. Lord, I pray that you'd bless this service. Use it for your honor and for your glory. In spite of us, God, I pray that you would show up and show out. And Lord, be to us, Lord the answer to all of our problems, as you always are. Lord, I pray that you'd help me as I stand to preach, to, Lord, preach with authority, but God, preach with compassion. Lord, I pray that I would be, Lord, what you'd have me to be. In spite of me, God, use me today. Lord, I pray for those that, Lord, are not able to be here this morning due to sickness. Many, Lord, dealing with sickness right now, and God, we pray you'd help them to get well soon. Lord, I pray you be with the Santa Benezes, be with Brother Tony, Miss Allie, be with baby Amelia. Uh, and Lord, I want to thank you for the praise reports that she fed, they were able to feed her, she ate good. Lord, thank you that she's progressing with her breathing. Lord, thank you, God, for being with Miss Allie, helping her as she gets well. Lord, I pray you touch Allie. Lord, she's been dealing with sickness. We pray you get her well soon and, and get them home soon. God, we thank you. Lord, I pray that you be with Shonda Wilson. And in God, that situation, Lord, you know everything. You are omniscient and omnipotent. And Lord, we're going to trust you. God, we're going to trust you. And Lord, we're asking that you would make a way that this, that this lady, God, wouldn't pass without receiving you. God, please make a way. Be with our services again today, God. If there be any lost in our midst, I pray you'd save them. And Lord, I pray you touch the unspoken prayer requests, the hands that were raised, God. We live in a world of suffering and struggling. And God, I pray that you would help us in our suffering, help us in our struggling, show us the way. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hold off, choir. Don't come up just yet. Don't come up just yet.
Miss Isla, won't you come up here, darling? Hallelujah. Appreciate little Miss Isla, don't y'all, church? Amen. Won't you hold that for me? And she's been uh, conversing with me quite a bit about uh, salvation. And we've talked a handful of times, and this last time she told me she was settled. And it's interesting. I appreciate a good raising today. Amen. And uh, I asked Miss Isla, I said, uh, I said, you know, are, do you believe that you're saved? And she said, yes, yes, I do. And I said, well, I said, how does one, how does one get saved? Amen. Because that's, that's important to be able to understand, right? And she looked at me and she said, by putting their faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen. And I was like, boy, there's some adults that wouldn't have said it that well today. And so, Isla, are you 100% sure if you died right now, you'd go to heaven? Yes, sir. No doubt in your mind. 100% sure. Yes, sir. I said that on purpose because she's been struggling. I want to make sure. Amen. Amen. And I love Isla, don't you, church? Amen. And she's Very wanting much. to get baptized, too. And so, um, if you would, I want you to kind of tell the church about when you received the Lord as your Savior and, and talk us through that a little bit real quick. Do you care to do that? Awesome. Go ahead and do that in the mic for the church. Tell them, tell them about when you got saved. Um, so, uh, when I was in church a couple Sundays ago, how... He, uh, Brother Caleb was preaching about how to get saved. Mm. Uh, I came up here and prayed, and uh, I went home. And then when we like went to the uh, youth retreat, youth, re well, no, it wasn't the youth retreat. What was it? Um. It was the night, like, when we all went to that. Was it Macedonia? Did you go to that? No. Was it the Sky Zone when we went to the trampoline park? Yeah. yeah that's what I was thinking. That's a good place to get saved. Amen. Go ahead. Talk to us some more. Well, that night when um we were there, I was just thinking. and. Is that amazing? Go ahead. Um... So when we got in the car to come to church that night, I had prayed and I had got saved. Amen. Amen. So she had been dealing with it for a while, church, and I, I enjoy that. That, uh, you know, we're just out just being a youth group going, and the Lord was doing something inside of her. And uh, ain't that what it's all about? So I need a motion. Got a motion. I need a second. 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 All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed like sign. Isla, we're going to dunk you in that baptistry. It's going to be awesome. And you're going to be a part of our church family. Is that a blessing, church? Y'all come hug her neck. Tell her how proud you are of her. Brother Beckham, if you could play something. Love you. Give me a hug. Both of you. about that today at the business meeting. Putting in an automatic water heater. Make it happen. It's just...
Have you ever felt the warmth of the sun after another long night was done and you opened your eyes to a brand new sunrise? God's faithfulness was there again, new mercies and new compassion when you lost all hope. He never left you alone. so unworthy of all the blessings so undeserving you don't understand why God would be so kind he's bottled every tear you've shed numbered every hair on your head hasn't he always proved he can take care of you Splendor of heaven, a 
crown a robe and throne. But what kind of love would lead you to leave the safety of that kind of home? I know that you willingly suffered. Oh, but why would you suffer for me? Sometimes I feel like a pistol Just useless old pieces of clay But somehow you saw more Something worth dying for Amen. He paid more than you should have paid And I know that you've seen all my failures and yet your grace has always remained. And someday in that land, before you I will stand. I'll lift my voice and praise your dear name. Sometimes I feel like a vessel, just useless old pieces of clay. But somehow you saw more, something worth dying for. You paid more than you should have paid. And I know that you've seen all my failures. And yet your grace has always remained. And someday in that land, before you I will stand. I'll lift my voice and praise your dear name. Oh, yeah.
I just want to say I'm, I'm glad I'm saved. And you know, I, I had the privilege of, of uh, teaching Sunday school this morning to the teens, and uh, we talked about what it really means to be saved. And uh, one of my favorite verses in the, in the book of 1 John, chapter 4, verse 10 says, Here it is, love. Not that, he, not that we love God, but that He loved us. And then it goes down a few more verses and it says, uh, We love Him because He first loved us. Amen. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. And I don't know about you, and, and I don't know what it was doing for them teenagers, but it was blessing my heart that the Almighty God of Heaven, whoa, friend of mine, that I don't deserve nothing, he should have sent me to hell. I should have went to hell for all of eternity and burned. But friend of mine, I'm glad to say that the Almighty God of Heaven, He left the throne and He left His robe behind and He left it all up there to come down here and He took on human flesh for 33 and a half years while still being 100% God. And friend of mine, He took on the cross for me. And I, like I told them, even if Tyler Hoskins wanted to, I couldn't do it. I, I, myself, my righteousness is not good enough to be able to pay the debt of my sin. But I'm glad that therein is the righteousness wherein the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah, what a God. Bless the Lord. While we were singing out, Brother Beckham was teaching about, about the breath of God, was teaching about how God breathed through his word. And, and Brother Zach was kind of exhorting along with it. And they were talking about some different ways how God has manifested himself to us uh, as being saved. And, and, I, and he, he went over to the book of Psalms, chapter number 55, there where, or Psalms chapter 51, where David had wrote that psalm about where David wrote that psalm where he's just really broken, really broken about his sin. And, and when you read that psalm, it's basically a response to what happened when David had, had when David was found out that he had messed up and he had, he had uh, the, prof, the prophet had found out, had told him all the things that had, that had been done wrong. And of course, David realized that he had a mistake in his life that he had to correct. And you read in Psalm 51, it says, Create in me a Create in me a clean heart, O God. But you read down later on, he says, Remove not thy Holy Spirit from me. And he be, and, and Brother Zach was talking about how David was asking, uh, he, his prayer was that the Lord would not let him depart from, or he would not, that the Lord would not take his, his spirit away from him. Uh, and, and he was talking about just how the Lord had, had let him see what, what had happened to Saul who did not repent. And he was talking about, uh, and yet David had a repentant heart. And I, I just began to think about the times of where, you know, I've, ha I've had a bad heart. And I've, and, I've had, and I've had some places in my life where they was, wick they was wicked and ungodly. And I had to repent and ask God to forgive me. And I, was, and I just began to think about the times that yet God has still always... Uh, uh, every time, every time that I've had something, uh, we seen that, that that we seen that line that says uh, every time that saying He just washes it away. His mercies are new every day, and I found that out to be so one hundred percent true. Is that His mercies is is new every single morning. Uh, it's new every day in my life, and I don't deserve that, friend. I don't deserve to stand here and tell about His goodness, friend. But He's been so much better, Amen. And I am so thankful that God would give us the opportunity that we could worship him and we and we could come here and we could just uh, enjoy church for uh, for just a few moments amen and, and he's been so wonderful amen and he's worthy of our praise you know oftentimes while the choir is singing I don't I don't do a whole lot of talking other than trying to lead the choir but verse number two of this song says who am I to say you've been unjust? And how could I complain that life's not fair? We go through life, we go through storms and trials, and we think, God, how could you do that to me? How could, why would you let me go through that? Who am I to say you've been unjust? A wicked, ungodly, 
self-serving sinner looking up to the God of all heaven who am I to say he's been unjust today and how could I complain that life's not fair and the verse goes on to say because if I got what I deserved and received sin's wages I had earned I'd be lost for all eternity because that's what we deserve today we don't deserve to be here with the presence of God inside us if we've been saved you deserve to be lost and on your way to hell don't let these words just wash over your ears today think about them as we sing we're going to sing that second verse today and I want you to think about the meaning of this song Preachers used to say, if I don't get your fire going, your wood's wet. I enjoy that singing, amen? Somebody with a word on your heart this morning, something you want to say or do at this time? Want to give the Lord praise? Anything at all? Yes, ma'am.
Amen. 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 He's been good to us today. Somebody else with a word on your heart. Who's going to pray for her today? I am. Pray for that situation. Somebody else with a word on your heart this morning. All hearts free? All right. Exodus in chapter 33 been good thus far, hadn't it? But uh, it's still church time and I'm going to preach. I hope that you're in favor of that. And if you're not, then you're not. Amen. Um, I appreciate that, Miss Michelle. That means a lot to me. That you would say that. And church, if you have any idea what it's like to go through seasons of doubt, then you should be able to say, I understand. Because we have seasons of doubt. And I'm thankful for a God that does not uh, <clears throat> cast us out when we doubt, but picks us up. John the Baptist had a moment of doubt, and Jesus said, this is the best man that there's ever been born of woman. Right. And we have our doubts and we, we really beat ourselves up. But I'm thankful that he doesn't beat us up. He reminds us of who he is in our moments of doubt. Ain't he a good God this morning? Right. I appreciate that. I appreciate Miss Terry. I appreciate that testimony. You know, the author of that song wrote that song after a, the birth of a baby. They had a baby born with Down syndrome. And it says, uh, it's not what I expected at all, but you're still the greatest thing that's ever happened. Amen. I'm glad that when we go through our seasons of doubt and our seasons of distress, that he's right there with us. Amen. Amen. That's something that Brother Josh England preached on at the youth retreat. If you didn't get to go, I would encourage you to look that up. It's on YouTube. I think it's even on Facebook. You can access it. But it rains on the just and the unjust, guys. This is life. But we get to go through it with him. And that's the best part of it. Amen? It's getting to watch him do what only he can. I appreciate my church this morning, my church family. It's good to be saved, ain't it? Exodus chapter 33, um, look at verse 12. The Bible says, And Moses said unto the Lord, See thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. 
Paul's with me. Let me give you some context so that I don't lose you. Moses is talking to God. Amen? Amen? He lets God know, or essentially reminds the Lord, if you will, that the Lord has told him to bring uh, the people of God up into the place that he would have them to go. Um, but Moses, again, he, he makes a statement here reminding the Lord. He says, Thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. He said, What's he talking about? Well, if you back up to chapter 33, first part of the chapter, the Lord is speaking to Moses. He's letting Moses know that he's going to send them up to a land flowing with milk and honey. Verse 3, he says, uh, Unto a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in the midst of thee. God tells Moses, I'm going to send you to this land, but I ain't going with you, for thou art a stiff-necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. God essentially tells him in verse 2 that he's going to send an angel before him. And so in verse 12, what's Moses saying? He's saying, Lord, you've told me you're going to send us up, but God, you're not going with us, and you ain't even told us who's supposedly going to be going with us. Now again, why has God told Moses this? Why has God reminded Moses about the stiff-necked people that Moses has been placed in charge of? Because of chapter 32, I preached on it last Sunday night. How that Moses, while up on the mount, what did the people of Israel do? Why they formed a golden calf and started worshiping it and acting like the world. Acting like the world right. acts. Right. And so God here tells Moses, he's like, all right, now I'm going to send you up. I've made a promise, if you will, but I ain't going with you. Verse 13, Moses is speaking. Now, therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people. Moses is asking for the grace of God. Verse 14, and he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. Boy, you ought to mark that verse. Moses said, God, if your presence is not going with me, I don't even want to go. I don't care if the land's flowing with milk and honey, God. Verse 16, For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? That's a wonderful phrase. So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. He said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. He said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in the cliff of the rock, and will cover thee by my hand while I pass uh, by. And I will take away mine hand, thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Let's go, Lord, in prayer real quick. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for the move and the presence of the Spirit this morning, God. I, I'm glad to know, Lord, that we get to experience your presence. And Lord, I'm thankful that I'm here today. And I made a decision to be here, Lord, seeking the presence of God. Lord, I'm thankful that I, can, that I can desire it. And Lord, that you can deliver your presence in my life. Help us today as we wade through this passage to glean important truths from your word. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I, I, I guess if I had to title the message, I would title it out of verse 18 where he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Moses, talking to God, makes a statement. He says, Lord, show me thy glory. 
And I want you to realize that there was a quest, if you will, in Moses' life here, a quest of uh, specificity. Moses has a specific thing he's asking of God. And we can see in this quest of specificity, we can see Moses' righteous understanding in verses 12 through 15. Uh, we can see Moses' understanding for uh, God and an appreciation for God in Moses' comprehension for what truly matters in his life and how that uh, there in verse 12 through 15, Moses is telling God, he's saying, Now, Lord, um, if you're not going to go with us, God, if, if you're not going to be a part of this journey, if you're not going to be with us, Lord, uh, then, then God, I don't want to go. Amen? And it takes a righteous understanding by somebody to have the mindset, to have the comprehension to say that even though the, the destination looks awesome, even though the benefits of the destination looks massive, uh, even though it's supposedly the greatest land upon the face of the earth, Moses, again, had a righteous understanding, an understanding that supersedes the understanding of this world, and that is that no matter where it is God wants you to go, no matter how good, listen to me, or how bad it is that God would like for you to be and where God would like for you to be, as far as its circumstances, as far as its perception, uh, no matter the destination, friend, the difference of whether or not you would like to go or not should be dependent upon whether or not God's going to be there with you. Amen. I'm talking about, if you will, church, listen to me. I'm talking about the will of God for a given person. You say, Brother Shirley, it don't look good to me. It don't look like something I'd necessarily prefer to be a part of or prefer to do or submit to as far as I'm concerned. Logically, Brother Caleb, I'd just soon not do what I feel like God's telling me to do. Well, friend, let me tell you something. Uh, your logic, your understanding, a uh, temporal, physical understanding has no bearing as to whether or not you should or should not do something. And listen to me, the thing that should determine your submission to where you are to be or where you are to go in this life should be dependent upon the presence of God and His will. Moses knew that this was a wonderful land. Moses knew that God promised that they would get the land. Moses knew if I go, God will send somebody before me and he'll make sure that we get the land. He'll take care of all of our enemies, the Jebusites, the Perizzites, the Hizzites, all of them. God's going to make sure we get there. But Moses knew and understood that, but now God didn't say he'd be there. And if God's not going to be there, I don't want to go there. Right. We see an intimate communication between Moses and God here in this understanding. You say, how does one, Brother Kevin, how does one achieve such an understanding by intimate communication? Listen to me. Because Moses had a relationship with God. I'm afraid, listen to me now, I'm afraid many of us could not care less as to whether or not God's there because we don't have anything to do with God already. I'm afraid many of us live our lives so far from God that whether or not God's presence is at the destination that our trajectory is headed is irrelevant to us because we've not properly been predisposed to Him. We've not properly experienced Him like we need. We've not properly, listen to me now, we've not properly had those uh, scenarios, those circumstances in our life where we're going through the valley of the shadow of death and we're going through uh, seasons of, of struggle and suffering and storms uh, and experience God in an intimate manner uh, by communicating with Him throughout that season to know that no matter how good a season is, if God's not there, then it doesn't matter how good the season is because God is the important factor of our life, His presence. Amen. The presence of God. We see intimate communication. We see incomparable companionship. Moses and God had a relationship here that the Bible explicitly describes. 
There in, uh, let's see, there in verse 11, the Bible said, Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. It doesn't say that Moses saw him face to face, but it said that Moses spoke to him face to face. As a man, listen to me, speaks to his friend. Is God your friend? And we would all unanimously say, yes, God is my friend. Here's a better question. Are you God's friend? That's very elementary, is it not? As little children will talk about who they want to be a friend to and who they don't. Well, I'm his friend, but he ain't my friend. Well, what's that even mean? Well, I'll tell you what it means. It means God's doing all the work in most of our friendships. He's the one If any communication takes place between us and him, he's the one that has to drop it in our life because we're never, listen to me now, we're never making an effort. This was an intimate companionship, an incomparable, rather, companionship. Moses had a relationship with God like he did not have, listen to me, with anybody else. Did you hear me? Moses had a relationship with God unlike he had a relationship with anybody else. His wife, his children, it was Moses and God. Well, no wonder he wouldn't go up without the presence of God because he had such a relationship with him. We see the individual consideration. God tells Moses uh, there, I believe it's verse 19, uh, he says, I know thee by name. I know thee by name, verse 8 or 17 rather. He said, I will do this thing also thou hast spoken for thou hast found grace in my sight and I know thee by name. I'm talking about, listen now, an individual consideration. God and Moses had a personal and eternal relationship and Moses had devoted himself to the presence of God so intimately, so incomparably that Moses knew, I don't care how good that land looks. If you're not there, God, I'm not going. Don't you wish Lot had made such a decision for his life? Don't you wish many others? I hear of people taking jobs moving their families across the nation and, and God wasn't within a million miles of it. I hear of people, I hear of people uh, uh, you know, making these major decisions in their life. And listen to me, friend. God is, is a present help in your time of need. He will speak to you. He will put you exactly where you need to be. He will show you exactly what you need to do here in this walk of life. Sadly, many people up and and do major things and they don't care about God because it's not about God. It's about the financial status that's waiting on them. It's about the, uh, the job, if you will. I heard a preacher give a testimony about a man that moved his family for a job. And the man was like, look, brother, I'm going to be making twice as much money. They're giving me a stipend for this and this and all these things. And the preacher was like, praise the Lord, um, you you going to go to church over there? And he was like, I don't even know. I don't even know if I'm going to go to church. I'm going to be pretty busy with this new job. What was that? Milk and honey, no presence of God. Milk and honey, it looks promising. It looks like it's going to be good for him physically. But is God going to be there? Moses had a righteous understanding. Moses, not only do we see his righteous understanding, I want you to notice about this righteous, that this this separates the people of God from the world. And Moses understood that. What did he say? He said, God, your presence with us is the difference maker. Isn't that what he told them there in verse 19? He said, notice, or rather, let me back up here. Moses is talking to God, verse 16. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people upon the face of the earth. You know what Moses said? Listen to me. He said, God, the difference between your people and everybody else is you. Amen. 
It's you, God. And I don't want to go anywhere without you. Hey, young people, I'm afraid we're going to school and we just, we just, we literally would rather God's presence was on the opposite side of the planet. And we're walking into a public school. Y'all listening to me? And we're no different than they are. No different. Why? How do you know that? Because God's presence ain't within a million miles of us. Say, so how do you know that? Because we don't talk to Him or like Him. We don't act like He would have us act. We probably don't even dress like He would have us dress. We look, sound, act, smell like the world. Why? Because He's not there with us. Adults do the same thing at work. Men talk about their wives like a dog and the wives do the same thing about their men. Old man and old lady. I hate those phraseology. I hate them. That's wicked. That's wicked. We talk about people and we get right on in to whatever everybody else is doing and we, if, if we act at all like we are to act, listen, we don't want nobody to know about it unless it's somebody that gets us. We're not willing to be a testimony to anybody or anything. Most, God help us today, I'm afraid that many Christians only get in on the presence of God when they're at the church. And we go out there and we do not care the first thing about whether or not, listen, He goes with us. Or what about this? He's gone before us, before we get there, so that when we get there, He's prepared a way to make our path straight and to act and be as he would have us act and be. Right. Well, you don't know how hard it is at work. You don't know how hard it is at school. Please, please, don't use such ignorant statements. Amen. Right. We all have work, and we all have some type of school. Right. Listen to me. We know. I get sick and tired of being told, well, you just don't understand. Well, I don't have to understand because right. I'm not God. But let me tell you who does understand. God does. Amen. You know what he's given us? His presence. Why? Because he wants us to understand the value of it. And most of us don't have a blessed fire thing to do with it. And we're living our whole life illiterate to spiritual things and the presence of God. Are we okay? And guess what that means? There's no difference between us and the world. What did Moses say the difference was, church? His presence. Moses said, how are people going to see your grace if you're not there? I love that phrase. Is it not in that thou goest with us? Is that not what gives people a hint, if you will, that, that we're different? Is that not what gives people a, a sign that we're your people? Because they see you in us? And how can they see you in us, God, if you're not there? Let me tell you something. I believe the presence of God's been here this morning. I can take the Bible and prove it where two or three are gathered in His name. All right? It's an emphasis in this place of worship that it's about Him. We pray in His name. We read in His name. We do everything. We sing His name. He's the greatest thing that's ever happened to us. Is that not the truth? And boy, ain't it sweet in this place when the presence of God begins to stir. When folk get out of their pew or out of the choir and come down and fall upon an altar in a position of worship to Him... And let me say this, I appreciate when other people see and they say, I'm going to go get in on some of that too. I'm, listen, don't die on me. Hey, we're a church family. I'm thankful when somebody gets out of the pew and gets on the altar and somebody else says, I'm going to go pray with them. Right. There's nothing worse than praying alone. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 And it's a blessing when God's people commune and corporally pray and worship and experience God together. I'm talking about the presence of God. I really enjoy the praise. I enjoy these, these, this choir getting up and lifting their voice in song to God. 
I enjoy seeing hands of praise raised. Amen. I enjoy hearing the voice of God's people lifting up praises to God, saying things like, Hallelujah, praise His name, glory to God. This is all awesome. This all, listen to me now, every bit of this that I've described is playing a role in the presence of God because in the praise of His saints brings the presence of God. And and we all enjoy that. And, And once you get a taste of that, man, there's nothing else that'll satisfy that taste. This modern day of worship and praise to God, that's nothing more than a fabric of what the world has to offer and just trying to uh, attach the Lord's name to it. God ain't within a million miles of that stuff. And I'm thankful for the day, friend, where I got over me and I started experiencing Him uh, and His presence did something inside of me like I'd never experienced before. And why would I just leave it at the church house? Amen. I believe it was last week we had somebody testify about going down the road and a song coming on and them being all by themselves. Listen to me. And God settling in that car with them and having a moment. Or back where I'm from, they'd say having a spell. Man. I'm talking about standing in the kitchen, mama, doing the dishes, listening to your youngins, pitter-patter, running around, or a baby fussing. And where the world was like, man, she looks like she's wore out and tired. And she's standing there, she's doing the dishes or she's cooking supper and she's got some music playing on her phone or something and there's tears falling off her cheeks and she's trying to keep it from getting in the food. Come on. Because God's doing something. Because I said God's doing something inside of her. Or, Or a man's, you know chest deep under his truck or in the, in the hood of his truck trying to get something fixed and he's got some preaching on and it's getting to him and it's helping him and God's talking to him. Listen to me. And the presence of God starts welling up inside of him like a fog. Right. Amen. And it gets foggy in there. And I'm talking about something real. Why would we limit the presence of God to this building? This is my first point. We'll finish the rest of it tonight. Why would we limit the presence of God in our lives to the four walls of this building? Why? When we enjoy it so much, when it's so precious and so sweet and so important to our faith and our being. Why? When Moses said, Now, Lord, you've told us we can have it. You've told us you'll send an angel. But now, God, I don't know his name. And he needs you. And I need you before I go to work. Before I go to school. Before I go to this interview. Before I make this decision. Before I sit down at supper with my family, God. Before I do anything in this life, God, it don't matter how good it looks. And it don't matter, listen, how bad it looks. If you're there, that's where I'm going to make my decision. Ain't that good? Is it not in that thou goest with us? That's it. Is he with you? And if he is, go. If he ain't, stop. Let's stand to our feet. Brother Beckham, if you could come. I didn't even get to where the message was supposed to be this morning. Ain't that a blessing? I like it when the Lord changes our plans. Ain't he good like that? He's good like that. presence of God today. The presence of God today. Do you do you care? Do you even let me ask you a question. Do you even care whether or not he goes up with you? Do you even care whether or not He has shown you His will for you. 
those three Hebrew children, what did they do? They took themselves, or rather prevented themselves from bowing to a false god. And the Bible says they took them and throwed them into a fiery furnace. Well, guess who was with them? Nebuchadnezzar said the fourth looked like the son of, man, son of God. He said there's four, we throw three, the fourth looks like the son of God. It, listen to me. Lot, where did Lot go? Sodom and Gomorrah, a place of wealth and pleasure. And what did that place of wealth and pleasure do? It took everything he had. And he ended up, <laughs> he ended up a mess. His wife died. He lost it all. But Sodom and Gomorrah looked so promising. Yeah, but it wasn't God's will. That burning fiery furnace looked so destructive. Yeah, but it was God's will. What was the difference? Jesus was with those Hebrew children and he was not with Lot. When are you, when am I, when are we going to appreciate the presence of God as we should? Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody's looking. How many of you today would say, I need him to go with me, Brother Caleb, by the raising of your hand. I need him this morning, Brother Caleb. Friend, you have no idea how much you need him. And I have